We have a plan to unleash a brighter, more extraordinary future, an extraordinary state-of-the-art arena that will be the home to both the Washington Capitals and the Washington Wizards. I promise and my commitment to you is we will do the right things in the right way to all the communities that we serve. This is monumental. It's crystal clear. Virginia is leading on innovation. That just hours ago in Alexandria, the announcement by Virginia leaders on a deal to bring the Caps and the Wizards to the Commonwealth. Good morning and welcome to News 4 Midday. I'm Juliana Valencia. I mean, what a big day for the future of D.C. professional sports. The deal announced this morning means moving the teams by 2028. It also calls for other big development opportunities in the Potomac Yard neighborhood of Alexandria. News 4's Joseph Olmo and Drew Wilder have been following the newest developments. Both were at this morning's announcement. But let's start our team coverage with News 4's Joseph Olmo. Joseph, what have you learned? Hey, Juliana, what have I learned? What has the entire DMV learned? We now know that the NHL team and the NBA team that play in Washington, D.C. won't be playing there much longer. Instead, they'll be heading across the Potomac River to this site here in Potomac Yard. This is in Alexandria, for those of you who are unfamiliar uh, with this rapidly growing corridor here. Again, along the Potomac River, River earlier this year, they added a metro stop here. But all of this open area uh, that you're see right here about 70 acres give or take that is where a what we're being told being described as a world-class entertainment district including a new arena for the capitals and a new arena for the uh, Wizards. One uh, one big arena, TV studios. We're talking about new restaurants. We are talking about a long list of things that are coming to what is seemingly just a boring old parking lot in Alexandria right now. I want to show you for the very first time our first look at some of those renderings that we got from uh, Monumental Sports Group showing us what this place could potentially look like in the coming years. We know that construction is set for 2025, should be wrapping up by 2028. This entertainment district, they're describing it as the global headquarters for monumental sports. They're talking about a state-of-the-art arena, TV studio, like I mentioned, a practice facility, and a performing arts concert venue. So not just the sports like we've seen at Capital One Arena, uh, but also uh, concerts and different types of performances. The next thing that I have up on your screen here is a map to kind of help you uh, understand the lay of the land here. Literally, the space that is right in front of the Potomac Yard Metro Station right now is where this new arena is going to go. So that parking lot that we just showed you live on TV right now, that's where the arena is going to go. But then across the street from the arena is a large, uh, right now, shopping center center. Part of that, we are told, is going to be taken away to make room for more of these restaurants and more of this uh, town square-like uh, space. Of course, a big, big deal for Virginia. That announcement made by Virginia Governor uh, Glenn Youngkin by the mayor of Alexandria, uh, the city of Alexandria, Justin Wilson, uh, and then uh, also uh, senators were there, uh, state delegates were there, um, and everybody that you would expect for a major announcement uh, like this. We're told that it's going to bring uh, tens of thousands of jobs to the area. But of course, one of the big questions that we have heard time and time again since this news broke this week about this potential move, now we know it's actually happening, is what about all the traffic in Alexandria, Virginia? No secret here that the traffic around Reagan Airport right here behind me. Not very, very good. You have the GW Parkway constantly backed up. Can Northern Virginia handle all of the new traffic that would come for people who are visiting uh, these games? Here's what Governor Glenn Young had told News 4 about that. So I, I believe the plan is it's going to get better. And the reason is, one, there's substantial resources that are going to be brought to bear to open up the area. Second of all, we've already had major advancements in multimodal uh, access, like the opening of the Metro stop, which is just right here. You can see it right here. On top of that, the new VR, the, the new VRA station is going to be right up here. The rail authority is going to stop right up, right up the road, about a mile up the road. And on top of that, there's a big plan to open up access to all the major thoroughfares. This is an exciting opportunity to really address a real challenge. What 
Yeah, of course, that big question now is what's going to happen to Capital One Arena, a place that these two teams have played at for literally decades. Well, the owner of the Capitals and the owner of the Wizards, Ted Leonis, he says that they're not going to forget about Capital One Arena, that the goal would be to host uh, the WNBA team, the Washington Mystics, uh, and to expand at Capital One Arena, make it a great place, he says, for concerts and performances that can hold anywhere between 10 and 20,000 people. So, you know, there's been this this another big question of what's going to happen here if they do move to Virginia. He talked about that a little bit today. Take a listen. We own Capital One Arena. Uh, we also own the Washington Mystics. Uh, women's sports is transcendent. Uh, um, my belief is that um, at Capital One Arena that we can host women's sports. Um, we've invested $200 million in the last 10 years in keeping Capital One um, world class as an arena. And our intention is to expand here and keep Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. a great place. So let's just recap the big news of the day, guys. Here it is, an NBA team and an NHL team coming to the Commonwealth of Virginia. What is next? Well, this still has to be approved by Virginia lawmakers, still got to be approved by the city of Alexandria. They, everybody that we spoke to today had a very optimistic tone that this was going to be approved. By 2028, instead of going to D.C. for these games, you might be headed right here at Potomac Yard in Alexandria. Back to you, Juliana. Yeah, and those renderings, they make it all too real that this move is likely happening. Okay, thank you, Joseph. Well, News 4's Drew Wilder continues our team coverage this morning with a full breakdown. So, Drew, what are these next steps in the process, and what does the Alexandria community need to know moving forward? Right. Those are two really, really big questions, Juliana. And Joseph touched on next steps a little bit. Of course, this is going to have to be approved by Virginia's General Assembly. It will have to be signed by the governor. There has been so much work going into this leading up to this point that I think for the most part, that's probably a done deal. Never say never, right? But there have been a couple of Virginia lawmakers who have been tweeting over the last couple of days that, okay, we might like this project, but there are some things that we're going to want in addition to that if we're going to vote to approve this. And then ultimately it will go to Alexandria City Council. You know, all those city council members were on the stage today, so it certainly seems they at least are, are giving that much support behind this project. But there's going to be a lot of discussion that needs to be had. I want to go back to one of the, excuse me, one of the records that Joseph showed just a little bit ago looks down on this massive campus, what they are calling a sports and entertainment district, because I think that gives you a sense of the scope and the impact to the Potomac Yard neighborhood. If you focus your attention to the left side of your screen, there are two buildings that are kind of north and south of each other that are laid out on that map. Right now, that is a very well-populated shopping center anchored by a Target store. There's a Best Buy over there, a PetSmart, a lot of really big stores that are busy at any time of the day. And that's really a go-to for the shoppers, at least here on the east side of Alexandria. Those are going away. Now, we heard from Ted Leonsis. We heard from the mayor of the city of Alexandria who said that, look, we are going to provide more restaurants. We are going to provide more commercial space. We're going to provide more residential space for this side of the city. So while those things might be going away temporarily, it certainly sounds like they will be coming back at least in some fashion. But now is going to be probably the hardest part of all of this, and that is selling this to Alexandrians. The people who live just on the other side of Route 1 who own homes over there, their families might have owned those homes for generations. They're going to have some feelings about a massive sports and entertainment district popping up just on the other side of the street. As this news conference was wrapping up earlier this morning, I had a chance to speak with Alexandria Mayor Justin Wilson one on one, and we talked about exactly that. I recognize that this is a surprise. I think the nature of these competitive economic development uh, initiatives are that, that, that things cannot be out in the public as quickly as we would want to. But now with this announcement, we have the opportunity to do the engagement that Alexandria is known for and making sure our community's voices are heard throughout this process. Given that, is there any room for any concessions? If the community is very vocal about wanting or needing something specific, are these plans at a place where that could be acquiesced? This is very high level. We have an opportunity to work over the months and years ahead to ensure that all of our community voices are in this, in this project. 
So you heard it from the mayor right there. I mean, we look at these renderings, we see how much work has gone into this up to this point, and it certainly feels like there is a lot that's already in place. But the mayor promises the community that there is some wiggle room here, that there are some things that could be changed, that could be tweaked, or some things that could maybe be added. If the community comes back and says, hey, look, here's something that we really want to get out of this project. Maybe that's something that could be put in over the next couple of years. The other benefit that the mayor is stressing and Governor Yunkin is stressing too, is that the impact from the tax revenue that will be generated here is going to benefit the city of Alexandria for decades for decades. This is going to generate so much new revenue that wasn't coming in previously that will be able to support funding schools. It will be able to support funding law enforcement, fire, building streets, building affordable housing. The city sees this as a way to keep Alexandria the rich and vibrant local community that it is while also building up this big entertainment district to help support those projects that Alexandrians have been so passionate about for so long. Juliana. So maybe a few years of growing pains, but then a lot of revenue and a lot of payoff, hopefully for those Alexandrians in the community. Thank you, Drew.